Hello, I'm Christopher Piokowski. I'm Chief Medical Officer of Abbott's Electrophysiology Division. I'm here to answer cardiovascular questions sent in by members of the Abbott HeartMates community. Let's have a heart to heart. Let's get started. All right, that's an important one. Bruce from Florida writes, Doctor, start with what electrophysiology is and what it does. Well, Bruce, to answer your question, electrophysiologists are basically electricians. They treat electrical disorders in the heart. Similar like a normal house, in a heart there are wires, there are cables, there are switches and plugs, and they can break. Electrophysiologists go inside the hearts with catheters, which are typically introduced to the groin. They diagnose those diseases and they treat the electrical uh, disorder, for instance, with something like soldering the electrical defect of a broken wire. Next, we have Tony from Washington. Tony asks, I always see atrial fibrillation described as the most common type of arrhythmia. What are the others? Are the symptoms different? Thank you, Tony. That is a great question. And indeed, atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia. Today, we estimate that in the near future, every fourth person above the age of 75 will be suffering from atrial fibrillation. However, there's a second bucket. And these are the arrhythmias that are inborn, electrical abnormalities in the heart that exist from childbirth on. Those patients are typically younger and they can have very distinctly different symptoms. I just want to give you one example. In women, in the age between 20 and 30, there's a very typical arrhythmia, which is called AVNRT. That is an arrhythmia that consists of an electrical circuit, an electrical shortcut in the AV node. And the symptoms are very typical. These patients complain about sudden onset of very fast and regular heartbeats. And they feel as if the heart is pumping out of their, of their neck. And they can typically terminate these arrhythmias with pressing or with cold water. That is an example, but there are many more. The next question comes from Benjamin from Ohio. Benjamin asks, how does a viral infection cause premature ventricular contractions? And is there a way to completely recover. Premature ventricular contractions are basically extra beats, or also called extrasystoles, which are coming from the main chamber of the heart. They intercept the normal heart rhythm for one uh, particular beat. Myocardial infections, such as viral myocarditis, can cause ventricular contractions. The reason they can cause it is the inflammation that happens in certain parts of the heart. Through that inflammation, cells of the heart become electrically unstable and they can fire such extra beats. These ventricular contractions, these extra beats can heal off when the inflammation heals inside the heart, so the symptoms can disappear. Sometimes, however, they can persist. And that is a case when the infection, when the myocarditis has left a little scar inside the heart. And that is something that would need to be discussed with an electrophysiologist. There are treatment options with medication or potentially catheter ablation. Okay, next question comes from Ellie from Illinois. Ellie asks, does POTS have any long-term effects on the heart? And what advice would you give someone managing this condition? POTS, P-O-T-S, stands for postural tachycardia syndrome. Ellie, first let me reassure you, this is not a harmful condition. It's a disbalance and imbalance between the stress hormone system and the anti-stress hormone system in the human body. It may be temporary, it may go away by itself after a certain time. The typical symptoms occur if someone is laying flat and then suddenly stands up. In that moment, this person can experience dizziness, even faints, or a very fast heart rate. But again, these are not dangerous symptoms, 
and it has no negative long-term impact on the heart. If someone experiences such symptoms, I would recommend to consult with a physician. To rule out other reasons for these symptoms that may have a larger impact on the overall health. As a management advice, I would have two simple tricks. Number one, it is important to drink enough fluid over the day and keep a good fluid balance. And number two, it is important to have more and smaller meals instead of fewer ones which are larger. There's still a few more questions in the inbox, but we're out of time for today. I get those on the next video. Thanks for watching, and thanks to our Heartmates members for sending in their questions. This is such a fun way for the medical team at Abbott to interact with you, and we truly appreciate the opportunity. If you like more information on how to join the Abbott Heartmates community, and maybe ask a question of your own, please visit abbott.com slash heartmates. I'll see you next time.